Hi, everybody. Great to see Hi, you. Hi, Sammy. Hi. Likewise. Very nice to meet you. Thank you Thank so much you. for uh, watch, wanting to talk with us. Of course. Of course. So I want you each to tell me how you're involved in this movie and how you got involved. We'll let Kika start. Okay. Well, I am Kika. I'm an, I'm the actress. Uh, I made the story. I have the story by, and I'm producing the film. My name is Chris. I am uh, one of the other lead actors, as well as the screenwriter uh, and one of the producers. I'm Nick, and I directed the film and then co-produced it with these two. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that. Nice. So tell me, I want you each to tell me how you would describe the movie, starting with Kika. Uh, well, the movie is uh, about human trafficking, and it's about the story of, of these two people, uh, her predator and the prey. And they both go on this crazy journey. And we wanted the movie to be basically about the relationship of like these two people because they spend a lot of time in the confinement space of a car. So when whenever you put like two people in a car, even if they like hate each other more than anything, something has to happen. So it's a lot about about their relationship. I would describe the girl in the back seat as kind of like at the beginning that it's inspired by true events and everything that you see play out between what Sophia goes through and elements of Ryan's character are all based on actual stories and real people that went through similar events or had um, unfortunate lives that led them down uh, such dark paths. And you go on this wild hour and, you know, 25 minute ride of, being exposed to what these sort of journeys look like for these people. Yeah, I mean, speaking of, you know, these real stories being told, um, you know, telling a story about human trafficking, definitely I think put all three of us in kind of a dark place, like while we were making this movie, because you have to, you know, Put yourself in these situations that are real life situations that happen to real life people and you know you are you know pretending obviously but um we hope that comes through on screen you know in, in some of the sequences and the whole film in general i mean you know th there are some sequences in this film that i really hope that will terrify people but like you know it's it's not in a supernatural way like it's in a real way like these things are out there these horrors are real and yeah, I, I hope that this film will, you know, break away from a lot of the thrillers out there right now by, you know, using that that real life horror um, as the main focus. So. Now, did that make it more challenging for you making a movie, doing it based on real events and such horrific events that happen in real life rather than just doing a run of the mill horror film? Or... Absolutely. Yeah, I think absolutely because. Uh, you know, there's a lot of risk with that because, like, there's, like, real people involved that went through this. So that was a big concern for us, and we wanted to make this as realistic as possible to our own knowledge, you know, because uh, we have not lived this, but we made research. We talked to people. We I had a friend who was trafficked. So we spent a lot of time researching the subject. And, yes, we wanted to make as, like, the biggest justice for the victims that and was like else, a big priority for us. To, to, to piggyback off of what Kika was saying is uh, what I felt like we did with the film was take the conventional storytelling of a thriller and use the backdrop of human trafficking to still meet both the what you would expect from a fictional story and weaving in these non-fictional elements. And I, and I feel like you know, I hope that like Nick was saying was that comes across and like Kika was saying that risk that is involved with the non-fictional aspect of the film. I really hope that blend comes across because many other films that are, quote, films about human trafficking, they either go too far to one end and they're more like a documentary or they go too far to the other end and they're just like an action film like Taken. And it doesn't uh, treat it with a delicacy that it, it, it should be treated with. Hopefully we find that delicacy. Yeah. Yeah, first, Kika, I want to say it's I'm very sorry about subject. your friend. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. 
Yeah, and you started to talk a little bit about this when you were talking about your friend. Um, what kind of other research went into this to make sure you did the movie not only telling the story, but doing it in a respectful way without stepping on the toes of real life victims? Well, I watched all sort of things on the internet about human trafficking, and I talked with like people who went through that. Like uh, me and another friend, we created a Facebook group with with like pre people that went, were trafficked, and I also talked with like police enforcement that uh, their main focus was like human trafficking, and then like the biggest thing was my friend. So the movie is a compilation with all of these stories. Uh, and all of these testimonies that that we've heard. Nick. What and yeah, sorry. Sorry. What would you like me to speak to? Oh, would you say? Oh, I was, I'm wondering your take on the question. How did you tell the story without well, oh. while remaining respectful to the victims? Yeah, I mean, I I hope that you know, even though we're weaving multiple different stories into one story, which is Sophia's story, you know, throughout the film, I hope that you know we're not taking it too far into this fictional place, you know, and we're keeping it still grounded always. And I think keeping it ground, and I think keeping it grounded will really help from you know, hopefully us not offending people who have gone through this, um, and you know, not coming across as we're using this to exploit those experiences. I think we're trying to you know, tell this story as if like people open your eyes, like this is happening everywhere. I mean, you know, you look next to yourself, like when you're on the highway in a car next to you and that girl in the back seat could be a victim right there. Like these things aren't that separate from, from us. It feels like it though, sometimes. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it, it does. And, and something about Ryan's character that we, you know, thought was interesting because Kika's point in, uh, uh, the, the exploring these two people was, you know, we had watched a um, a documentary uh, that was very eye opening to individuals that are are criminals and kind of sharing their stories and what they've gone through. And there was this one uh, individual who shared his story, and you could just tell from the story that he shared that, um, you know, he he had no other choice. It was that life or he was going to die. And, you know, that's, that's really interesting to explore in a narrative. Um, Cause most of the time it's usually this person is the bad guy and they're just going to stick to that. You know, they're going to stay in their lane as, as a bad guy. Now, what was the most intriguing thing that you learned about human trafficking while making this movie? The amount of money in it, I had no clue that uh, like it's like over one hundred and fifty billion dollars a year is about the amount of money that is is speculated to be in that, and that was that that number kind of just had me be like, "I'm sorry, what?" I had to read that again, um, but it's it's that that was that was that was shocking. Well, I think that there's a lot of things that are crazy to when you learn about it, like the fact that like there's not just like human trafficking for like sex slavery, there's human trafficking for all sort of things like uh, like workers, um, you know, like we just always think about like prostitution and, and, and it's not really like that. And the way that they treat the girls a lot of times, they like it's a lot of like manipulation, a lot of pretending to you know be their boyfriends and um just to lure them in um they give them gifts um there's just it's really really dark and and, and like it, it goes to a point that they can even like kidnap babies for future uh slavery it's really crazy and there's also a lot of people in like in high society that like do this too Scary. Yeah, it's it really yeah. is. Yeah, it's I mean, unfortunate it still exists. <laughs> yeah, and and in more, it's more, and more ways it seems a lot of movies about human trafficking because it's such a like like touchy subject and controversial that I think that people are like scared to well, talk it, about it. 
And, and I think to the point of what you just said, I mean, for me, like learning, you know, before this, I'd basically, you know, the average probably Americans exposure to human trafficking is probably like taken and like hearing about the border, like, you know, traffickers who are bringing mm -hmm. immigrants across. And yeah, like you hear about sex trafficking and stuff, but like realizing how many shades there are to it is really eye opening. And I think that's also why it's kind of hard for people to just like point at one thing that, you know, lies under this definition of human trafficking, because there really isn't like there's a lot of different ways people get roped into this. Some of them are very, yeah. you know, like criminal. Uh, some of them are very coercive, like you were saying, Kika. So uh, there's there's a lot of shades to this. So that, that for me was what I learned doing this film. Yeah. I mean, think about Epstein, you know, like that was a, a billionaire dude and he was like the most luxury stuff. Like that's literally what he was doing. So yeah. there's there's yeah. like levels to it, you know, like the prostitution prostitute across the street could be trafficked, but there's also like people taking them to these like exotic places. Homes. Yeah. It's so sad and so scary. Now, how did you remain? I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but how did you deal with it mentally since it's such a tough, difficult topic to deal with? I mean, I don't know mentally just hearing about it. I'm trying not to cry on this interview, but how did you keep it all together while filming this? Well, I, mean, I think that, like, first of all, we were we shot this during COVID. So, you know, the fact that, like, I think for us, like, we were all stuck in the houses and it was also, like, good for us to be creative and active in that time um of course it's like it was a lot of it was heartbreaking but like I think that like the the spirit of us being together supporting on each other you know um we are a lot of our cast and crew were like friends so we were just like a big big family going through the dark subject of the movie but also going through COVID <laughs> So yeah. we kind of leaned on each other, yeah. which was great. And you have to kind of desensitize to it. And you do. I mean, yeah. I think when you spend yeah. time with anything, you do. But like um, on set, particularly with one scene, I think Chris and Kika, you know, which one I'm talking about near the end of the film. Uh, yeah. There, I mean, I was in tears and everyone on set was kind of in tears with the scene. Like there are yeah. some intense things that happen in this film. So we didn't want to shy away from from the darkest side of this, the darkest shit. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, in the edit room, then again, it was like, okay, now we have to go through the coverage of this scene and, you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it can be, it can be a little bit much, but it's important. It's an important scene to the film and the story. Uh, and I hope that it will be impactful to, in the theater. Yeah. To Kika's point that she said about the 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 crew and, and the cast and everybody knowing each other, it, in between takes, there was an element of sort of we all collectively knew that once it was action, we were all there in this moment dealing, you know, with Sophia's journey. And then when we would cut, there would be a sense of we need to uh, um, find levity where we can. And, and I think because of those elements, you know, being present, we were able to do that. And that balance of moving in and out of that headspace was present. Uh, and it was like a perfect recipe of being able to execute the film because of the, the people behind the camera that were this, you know, support group. It was, it was, it's still made it hard, but um, that's, that's where you can sort of balance the, the darkness with the light. Yeah, we weren't being method, you know. <laughs> oh no, yes, yes, there were moments when the camera would cut. We were Jared would find Leto. No, Wait, Chris, not... you're not always you're, you're not always like Ryan, Chris. Right? Yeah. No, it was kind of funny. I will say that that sometimes people would be like, because um, while producing and acting, it can be very stressful. People were just oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, just I just thought you were in 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 character. And I was like, no, I'm just, I was just stressed. I was just naturally stressed with producing. That was yeah. a fact. We all had to wear many hats on the set, as you know, a lot of Indian yeah. makers have to deal with. So yeah. I think maybe yeah. that actually added to Ryan's character, honestly. It did, like, yeah. yeah. That real life like, energy. Stress. You could just yeah. channel that into, you know, the characters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. It worked out.
Well, I have to say, you guys are amazing. I'm so proud of you for making such an incredible movie Aww. with such a beautiful, uh, beautiful story to tell. That was like intense story to tell. And I think you guys are so beautiful for doing something and bringing awareness to something that needs awareness. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you. Good. That that means a lot to hear that. Uh, really, really. I, uh, I, Kika had been um, busting her butt on this story for a long time. And when we finally got it into the screenplay, the how important what you just said was a through line to the point where we're at now. So just hearing hearing you say that, thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome, and I well, really hope your friends okay I, now, Kika. So thank you, thank you. Yes. But I mean, just like they also busted their asses, like yeah. I, I just because I made the story before they showed up, but like once they were on board, like for sure, yeah. It's been it's been a lot for everyone, but we're, yeah. we're yeah. It feels so good to almost be to the finish line on this and finally be able to put it in front of people and like yes. you know, uh, Sammy having you you know be able to watch it and, and give us feedback. That's awesome. So thank you so yeah. much. You're welcome. Yeah. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a wonderful rest of your day. You Thanks too. So bye bye. Thank you, Sammy. All right. Bye. Hey. Bye. All right.